Hey and Gribblers, I've just arrived at my next destination for the best street food in Frankfurt and it's Muku. They have the most amazing ramen which I'm really looking forward to try. Hey guys, I've just sat down now, but please just be aware, we've been outside for half an hour waiting. That being the case, we didn't make a reservation, we made that mistake, and I'm suggesting that you don't. Make a reservation, this place is so busy, they were so kind to let us in on short notice, but that may not be the case for everyone. Okay guys, so I've just taken my order, and with expensive taste, I've ordered the, yellow fi uh, the bluefin tuna, I've ordered their wagyu uh, beef item, I've ordered a miso ramen, and Tonkas 2 ramen. So you're gonna try the ramen's what you hear. I'm really looking forward to those. That's what's brought me here. And I picked the best sashimi on the menu and I picked the best grilled dining item on the menu. It's a little bit expensive here, but at the service has been delivered at the quality of items that like you're gonna get. And the fact that a lot of this is imported, even the beer that I'm enjoying, it's definitely worth it thus far, but need to taste it. So my bluefin tuna has just arrived and it looks epically beautiful. There's some sake on its way and I've got some soy sauce here way to be dipping. Let's get stuck in. And you've got to use chopsticks for this. So let's try without soy sauce first. Oh man, that's so good. I've never had a fish before that melts in your mouth. That just seems to fall apart, disintegrate with the saliva. Um, it's beautiful, it's magical, it's like amazing. I don't think I've ever had anything like this. Um, wow. Let's try with a bit of um, soy sauce. Mm. Soy sauce seem to give a different texture in regards to length and um, like in my room, that, that kind of savory section of it. It just seems to give a beautiful sweetness and, and saltiness to it that just seems to work really well with that fish. Um, it's just delightful actually. I love sushi, I love this cuisine. It's probably one of my favorites, if I'm honest with you. I can't get enough of this. Super good, super, super nice. Um, I'd come just for this, I'd, come, I'd have this item again and again and again here alone. It's just amazing. I'm super happy with this. So, sake's just arrived. Um, it's been poured in the most mysterious and really cool way, if I'm honest with you. I've never had that before. And you know what? It just adds to the experience, adds to the service. Um, this dish is, is wonderful. It has some raw onions, it has some seaweed, it has some wasabi. It has three different types of tuna in there. Um, one raw, one just slightly different coloured, and the other one which has been slightly cooked. All of it is beautiful. I cannot, I cannot suggest it enough. It's an amazing dish. Um, and let me just try this with a bit of sake. Amazing, thank you so much for calling back. Man, but the sake is awesome, super nice. The sake is like sweet, it's, it's not too strong, it seems to really work with it in regards to cut into the fish. It just seems to like lift it nicely. As in, as in just this dish alone, honestly guys, it's perfect. I couldn't ask for a better dish to start off with. So Wagyu beef has just dropped on the table and I'm so excited for this. It smells amazing, you can just smell it in the air, it's just beautiful. It comes with a beautiful sauce that looks a bit spicy with sesame, but I'm gonna give this a go by itself first, so. Mm. It's got a beautiful lightness to it. It's cooked really thin, really tender. I'm sure I could pull it apart with chopsticks, never mind use a spoon. It's just done really well. It is probably one of the most expensive items in the menu, but I think it's one of the most well-known and it would feel like it's the most value for money if you know what it is, if that makes sense. Wagyu beef is, in the way that it's made is, is amazing, but I really love this. Mm. But that sesame, soya, deep rich, richness to it, a bit of saltiness to it, all that complements and almost seasons the Wagyu beef itself. I really like this. Um, do I rate it more than the tuna? No, that tuna was beautiful. It was magic in its expression in regards to what it offers. This Wagyu beef is really good, but if I had to choose between both, that tuna, that blue tuna, amazing. Saki time. So. Comes in a beautiful thin glass, almost a, a soup bowl in the way it's kind of created. They come over in this big magnum sized sake bottle, pour it in here, weigh it, then they pour it out in what can only be described as some sort of traditional method. And this sake is so light as a spirit, it's so 
sweet, but I don't mean like sweet and sickly. I mean it's just it's just palatable, just really sweet. Um, I can't I can't compare it to anything. It is truly like itself. Imagine an alcoholic, um, lightly flavored water that is sweet enough that you could drink quite a bit and without having to mix it with anything, it's lovely. Uh, it, it, it seems to work really well with the fish, it works really well with the Wagyu beef that I had. Um, it works really well with the traditional beer that's served on draft here. Just everything about this restaurant is done sublimely. The waitress is lovely. Uh, the experience, even the upselling, is, is really strong. So just be aware when you come here, have a bit of money in your pocket, but you'll enjoy every aspect of it. The decor, the service, the products, um, the the way it's displayed, the authenticity, uh, even all of the spirits, all of the um, items are, are direct source, so they don't go through any other supplier. And in this being the case, they're kept as fresh as possible. The waitress had mentioned this quite a few times. It gave me confidence that what I'm ordering, the freshest it could be, despite the distance that it is. It's top notch so far, I'm really impressed. My miso ramen has just arrived and it's so amazing. The smell is so rich. The colors are really great. It looks fresh on the top. It's got a nice bit of oil to it, so I know it's got some fat in it. It's cooked in the most tremendous of ways, whether you're using beef bones, and it's got a whole variety of things in it that just make it seem amazing. So the beef ramen itself, the it's got, I'm going to read this from the menu, so miso uh, base, noodle soup, stew and pork bones, chicken, and it's with fried minced pork, onions and spring onions. It's just, it looks heavenly, loads of richness to it. It smells beautiful and rich even in the air. I'm blown away, I need to give it a go, I need to give it a try. It looks hot, so bear with me if I start making faces. Let's start with the liquid first. That's really rich, really nice, really good depth to it. Oh, please come through, bring them in. Really rich, really deep. Um, there's so many flavors going on. This and the length of it is, is amazing. Um, hot, I might add. I don't mean spicy, I mean hot as in the temperature. But it looks great. Let's give some noodles a go. With chopsticks, it may be challenging. And I'm going to make an awesome slurp because that's how you've got to eat these things. Um, this is not going to be elegant. But I'm going to give it a go. And dip half of it around my face, probably. Uh, all right, that looks super hot. Oh, just trying to cool it down the best I can. Okay, guys, I know I'm gonna burn myself doing this. The noodles smell amazing. Oh man, that smells so so good. It's, I, I cannot tell you how great this smells. When they start inventing smell -o vision that's when this is going to take off massively. Oh. The, the noodles are really thick and beautiful, and they have all that flavor in them. And it's not like they're too doughy either. It's a perfect thickness against thinness. If it's too thin, you wouldn't have all that kind of deep, rich flavor in them. And they wouldn't have absorbed it. If they were too thick, it'd be too doughy, and you kind of have that like, kind of deep pasta-esque feel. But this is amazing. We choose the best places at Hungry Bellies, and we have careful consideration for where we go, what we do, what the locals believe, what the best reviews are, what we believe in the industry, and what we believe is best for how we portray it. This is the best ramen I've ever had. And I use the expression so often, and I don't want to dilute it by saying it's the best this and the best that, and actually it is the best, and I want to be able to communicate that to you so you know the best places to go to. That's my job, that's my offering, that's my passion, that's why I believe we are offering good consumer advice with hospitality, intelligence, and passion, and love for food. Guys, come here for ramen, come here for bluefin tuna, Come here for service, come here for sake, come here for beer. Come here in Frankfurt for the most amazing street food as brought to you by Japan. So I've just received my tonkatsu ramen. It looks great, great colors, thin noodles looks of it. How it's made is a cloudy noodle soup with uh, pork bones as a broth. Um, and it's 
We've got smoked pork, shoulder roast, and small onions. I couldn't remember all these things. I'm just too excited to have to read from the menu with a bit of sesame seeds thrown in. So let's try a little bit of that liquid, shall we? Oh, wow. That pork is really in the, the flavor you get when you taste cracking. That kind of like sweet and gnarly and depth and lingering level to it. That's just from the broth alone. It's almost like the epitome of how that flavor would be, but in liquid. There's no way I can describe that. It's just, you take that and that, and that equals that. It's super nice. I don't know how you do it. It's like a Heston Blumenthal's variation of making some medieval meal and make it as ice cream. It's just funky and different. It's awesome. Um, I wasn't expecting that. It's blown me away a little bit, actually, if I'm honest with you. Let's give it a go again. It even smells like crackling. Uh, if you like crackling, this is a dish you're gonna really love, man. This is a, a complete shock. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, let's try some liquid then. Oh, we've tried some liquid, let's try some actual noodles. All right, once again, this is gonna burn the hell out of me. And there's gonna be some nasty slurps, but that's what ramen's all about. Thin noodles, not as thin as angel hair pasta kind of style, not as thick as normal pasta. They just absorb it beautifully. It's really, really nice. Great flavor to it. Um, good length, good depth. It's, it's like a crackling base soup. I don't know how they explain it, but if you like that crackling or, or pork scratch and things like that, you're gonna love this dish, absolutely. It's gonna blow you away. You've got some toasted sesame seed in there, really gives a nice length to it. Great seasoning, a lightness of pork about it, a bit of fat in there, but honestly, it's a great, great ramen. My heart is somewhat belonging to the miso ramen. That's my preferred choice. This one's beautiful, you love pork. This is the dish you want to get. Um, but both are amazing, 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 amazing. I've never had such ramen like it, and I couldn't suggest it high enough, along with the whole experience here. It's amazing. So this restaurant, the Japanese authenticity is amazing. In every layer you receive this, in the beer, in the sake, in the dishes, in the starters, in the service, in the decor, in the how you're made to feel, how you're greeted and how you're farewelled. Muku offers a tapas variety of dishes and then you have your main course ramen. They give you, on the menu, they give you a journey of how they would like to be cold, hot, fish, meat, and then ending with ramen. And as a, as a tapas style, this is the kind of street food element that you can have. You can have pick and choose and, and robustly enjoy. But that being the case, that's the reason why I call it street food, because you know what? It's how it fits. You can have it as takeaway, you can enjoy it in the park. And this food, this high quality, you don't get traditionally street food, yet you get it here. I couldn't praise this highly enough in regards to the street food, applicability, and the quality of a traditional restaurant and more. It's amazing. I'm coming back here again, and I guarantee that. Hey guys, so for dessert, just to finish up my whole meal experience here, I've gone for the green tea masher ice cream, and I've gone for the sesame seed black ice cream. It looks amazing, the colors of variations of it, and do you know what, I'm just gonna get stuck in, I can't wait. So this green tea ice cream first. Really deep, really rich. Almost like a CBD green tea flavor. It's just lovely, it's a really nice way to finish off this meal. It's the epitome of the end bit of a green tea tea bag that you just seem to be sucking on, but in a more positive way. It's lovely, super nice. And quite light for ice cream, if I'm honest with you. Uh, let's try this black bit. Oh man, sesame seed comes through. It's like having those sesame seed uh, candy bites. It's just lovely, it's really, really nice actually. That's my favorite ice cream. That's my favorite ice cream. Sesame seed, I'm, I'm not necessarily a, a sweet person, so you know, generally I look for that salty caramel that kind of balances sweet and savory. This is that has that perfect balance of sweet and savory. Sesame seed and ice cream and lightness and balance. And it's my favorite ice cream.
Hey, I'm Gribbles. I've just finished the most magical meal I've had in Frankfurt. Japanese authentic restaurant. I'm off to the hotel now. I'm flying out tomorrow morning and I'm so glad I've managed to visit this place. It is a magic spot, a gem. It's even widely known. It's not a particular gem that you found out of nowhere. The results on TripAdvisor, on Google, on Facebook all show it's amazing. Local knows it's amazing. Now I know it's amazing. Now I'm telling you, it's amazing.